My name is Dania and I go to an IB school and I'm in grade 11 currently and I study psychology anticipated standard level. Uh, throughout this series I'm just going to be giving you a quick guide on how to do the general learning outcomes and the PNVs and ge genetics and behavior and just throughout the whole psychology course that I will be doing. Um, this is because I would like to look just before my examinations and revise over the content that I have done or for the people that want to get ahead and see what they're in for. Um, basically this is just a disclaimer so pause the video and just read it through. As I will be doing the first general learning outcome, I will be telling you about the biological level of analysis first. If you want to skip to just the general learning outcome, I will type in the description box what the time is where I start that. So basically the, the biological level of analysis can be defined as um, a analysis that states that all cognitions, emotions and behaviours have a physiological basis. And basically there's a few points that are very important in the biological analysis. Um, the functions of the body, for example sleep which is regulated by melatonin which regulates the car circadian cycle. Um, hormones and hormones can be described as chemical messengers produced by endocrine glands that control and or regulate activity of certain cells or organs. Um, guys you should really know the definitions because yeah, that's just a given. Um, the four hormones that my school, I think that all Ivy schools do is melatonin, which is the sleep hormone, cortisol, which is the stress hormone and restores homeostasis, oxytocin, which is the bonding or trust hormone, and testosterone, which is the aggression hormone. There's neurotransmitters, which are chemical messages that pass messages across the synaptic cleft from a presynaptic neuron to a postsynaptic neuron. And the four are basically noradrenaline, which is the stress neurotransmitter. It goes in line with cortisol and serotonin, which is just a general, general regulation of the body. It also is responsible for happiness. Acetylcholine, which is responsible for memory formation and muscle contraction. And dopamine, which is the happy neurotransmitter. Um, there is brain damage studies, which we learn about a lot. They're often case studies, for example, patient HM, which is studied by Milner in 1957, or Clive Waring, which is investigated by Wilson in 1985. And then we go on to brain imaging technologies, and there's four that we basically focus on, which are PET scans, MRI scans, CAT scans, and fMRI scans. <clears throat> And then there's brain structure, which is very important. You should definitely know, without a doubt, the lobes of the brain. Um, my teacher taught me F part, which is just frontal, parietal, occipital, and temporal. It's just an easy way to remember. You should know Wernicke's and Broca's area. Broca is for production, and Wernicke's is comprehension of language. And then just other simple structures like cerebellum or corpus callosum, etc. Uh, localization and lateralization. Uh, localization is when a specific structure in the brain is carries out a specific function, and lateralization is where a specific hemisphere, so we have the right and left hemisphere in the brain, and they're just two theories carried out, and they're supported by many, many case studies and research. And neurons, just just back to neurotransmitters. Basically, you should know how it runs. Um, about the action potential, depolarization, hyperpolarization, and repolarization, and just general stuff like that. And there's just a quick outline of the biological level of analysis. Now we will go on to the general learning outcomes, and there is three key principles about, upon the biological level of analysis. There is animal research provides insight into human behavior, patterns of behavior can be inherited, Cognitions, emotions, and behaviors are products of the anatomy and physiology of our nervous and endocrine system. That's a long one. Um, basically, the first one is that, to elaborate upon it, it's because we use animals, because of rats, for example, that's predominantly used in animal research. They have the bilateral brain structure as us humans do as well and they have the same neurotransmitters and hormones to us humans as well. For example, Martinez and Kessner 1991, they investigated acetylcholine in rats and 
that matched up with Squire's 1987 studies how Alzheimer's links to less acetylcholine in the brain. uh, We use animals because they are simpler, less complex and reproduce quickly so we can study generational effects. And simply it's more ethical to harm animals than it is humans and this can be justified if sufficient new or supporting data is expected to be found. Now patterns of behaviour can be inherited and behaviour is innate because it is genetically based. So basically genes are the basic unit of inheritance and they are found on chromosomes based made of DNA and there is 23 pairs of chromosomes in human diploid cells. If you guys also study IB biology you would this would make total sense to you. If not then just try and memorize it because it is very important in the understanding. Now with mammals and primates we share a lot of genetic makeup and we share 95% of genetic genetic makeup with primates such as chimpanzees and that's why evolution is such a big thing in psychology. We have evolutionary psychology with Charles Darwin being the father of it and it's just very important that you know a little bit of about, about evolution as well to just give you a background understanding of this. Now, you have to mention that genes influence a variety of behaviours, for example intelligence, depression or schizophrenia. It's widely known that they are, they are hereditary disorders, even though they can be acquired over a lifetime. And you have to mention that you might have heard it's nature versus nurture, but it has recently been changed due to epigenetics, etc. That it is nature via nurture through interacting with the environment. And now the last one: cognitions, emotions, and behaviors are products of anatomy and physiology of our nervous and endocrine systems. Um, basically, there's just brain processes, neurotransmitters, hormones, and behavior. Um, and then there's physiological processes are foundation of the biological level of analysis which affect human behavior and as you can tell I have the most points for the first two so those will be the ones that I have chose to study and I will be talking about in this eight mark now the GL01 the question is outline principles that define the biological level of analysis now you guys have to really concentrate upon the command term and this one is outline and that means to give a brief account or summary. Now principle one, which it will be paragraph one, what I do is I stated that there are three principles but we will only be investigating two thoroughly and I stated the first principle and then I went on to tell it why is it important and just listed the reasons. So basically, one key principle states that animal research provides insight into human behavior. And why is it important to use animals? Well, because we share a similar genetic makeup, we have common ancestors, there's similar structure, and we have potentially harmful experiments. As I've stated before, mammals share 95% of genes, so that's very very good to um, use animals for testing because it can definitely relate to how we are. Uh, There's common ancestors as I said before regarding evolution. We have similar structure. Can you guys remember the three things? Well there's neurotransmitters, hormones and bilateral brain structure and potentially harmful experiments and it's just more ethical to harm humans. It's simple. Oh sorry more ethical to harm animals than humans and it's simple and less complex and you can study generational effects and it's because if there's sufficient new data formed it's justifiable. And the first key study that I will be using to demonstrate this is Rosa McGinn Bennett 1972. I do strongly suggest that you know the year. So basically the aim of experiment was to study the effect of an enriched or deprived environment on the development of neurons in the cerebral cortex and the independent variable was that there was three conditions there was an enriched environment deprived and a controlled environment and the dependent variable what they measured was a change in cerebral cortex 
the method was that there were rats and <coughs> sorry and the enriched environment had toys to play with whereas the deprived had no toys and the control were were rats in a standard cage group of groups of three to four they stayed 30 to 60 days in their environment and they were sacrificed and had a post-mortem carried out the results were that they had increased cortical thickness the frontal lobe was heavier and synapses were 50 percent larger in neuro than the cerebral cortex and had greater activity and which which group do you think this occurred in of course the enriched rats the conclusion was that the it suggests that stimulation of enriched environment can lead to larger synapses and increased cortical connections and brain plasticity might also be possible in young human adults depending on the environment they were raised in and always remember to link it back to the question and because it is an animal study you have to say that even though it was conducted on animals it provides insight into human behavior and if it's possible you give a link to a human study that relates to it in this case mcguire et al 2000 demonstrated brain plasticity with the environment enrichment being a taxi driver now principle two we have i stated the second principle and then the evolution theory the influence of genes and nature via nurture now, I say the principle which is, another principle states that patterns of behaviour can be inherited and this is because we inherit genetic makeup from our parents. You state the theory of evolution and say that it was founded by Charles Darwin. You, I would say that it supports the principle and that's why we use it. And just give a brief explanation of the theory about the main mechanism of natural selection, etc. And then go on to say, talk about genes, how, what they, what they basically are about the 23 chrom, um, pairs of chromosomes in diploid human cells, and they are very influential on behavior and can cause different behaviors, for example, intelligence, schizophrenia, and depression, and definitely mention that it is nature via nurture due to interaction with the environment. Now, my supporting study is Bouchard et al. 1990. And the aim of that was to investigate concordance rates on a number of variables. And the method that they used was they had a self-selected sample of monozygotic twins, which is 100% shared genes, who were reared together and reared apart, MZT and MZA. The results were that IQ rates for concordance were 69% for monozygotic apart and 88% for monozygotic together. Uh, they said that nurture does play a role in um, IQ inheritance, but it is to a large... Sorry, nurture does play a role in intelligence, but IQ to a large extent is inherited. They said that 70% of observed variation can be led to genetic variation. And they concluded that concordance rates were high in the study, but they were definitely not 100%. So it is quite difficult to determine the influence of genes. And they have no control over extraneous variables, for example, the environment. And that affects accurate estimation of intelligence of the genetic contribution. And you have to link it. And what I said was that patterns of be oh, sorry, <laughs> patterns of behavior are inheritable, and the extent to which genes predispose individuals to certain behaviors differs with each individual. And basically, my eight mark ended up looking like this, which was 554 words. You can pause it to see if if you want. <laughs> and Bouchard and Al actually had quite a few more um, studies. Uh, had a few more results so just pause it here and you can see right here so yeah thanks so much guys hope that helped hope that helps me when i look at it before the exams <laughs> bye thanks